Powers and exponents, what do they mean? In this mathematical tutorial, we're going to consider that question, uh, learn about the rules, and learn how to compute with those rules. Okay, so look at what we have here, a to the power of n. All right, so that means a times a times a times, and then dot 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 times a times a, where there are n of these. Okay, so for example, if I just stop at three, press shift enter in Mathematica, well, it will write this a to the power of three with a three up in the exponent. Okay, so that means we have three of these all multiplying together. Okay, so there, it's a useful representation of multiplication because say, if you had a hundred of these a's multiplying together, well, you wouldn't want to write it in this way because it's very long. Furthermore, we have a number of rules which are helpful in dealing with such expressions. All right, so let's scroll down and have a look. So the rules that I have in my booklet, a YouTube course in Mathematica, are given right here. And my booklet can be found on my website, which will be in the description. Okay, so let's consider an example. All right, so a to the power of m times a to the power of n. That's given by a to the power of m plus n. Now let's just consider this. So if we had uh, dot 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 times a and there were m of these, okay? Let's suppose there are m of these and then I want to multiply that by a times a times a well, I'll put a dot, dot, dot here, right? So it looks somewhat different times a. All right, and suppose there are n of these. Now, I'm just writing, so m of these, and this is not code, I'm just writing n of these. Okay, how many a's are there together, all together? Well, there's m in the first uh, collection of, of, of things multiplying together, and n in the second. So if we were to multiply them all together, well, clearly there are m plus n, all right? So that's how we get this rule. It's pretty obvious. All right. Now, the next one, this says a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m minus n. Okay, so again, if we have m of these and n of these, and we are looking at a to the power of m, in that case, over a to the power of n. Well, we write it all out this way, all right? So I'm going to open up a palette. So palettes, basic math assistant, show it to you. Okay, now I'm just going to click this fraction button, and then I'll close the palette. All right, so what we have copy this into the numerator and this into the denominator all right now let's for a moment suppose that m is greater than n well then there are more a's here than there are in the denominator all right so we would then cancel the the a's that match those in the denominator and what we have now let's just rewrite the numerator first so this is the numerator, and I'll put this in brackets. All right, and then we had times a times dot 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 times a, something like this. Where what we have here is the amount greater than the difference. So that if if there are m of these and m minus n of these, is that right? No, sorry n of these matching what was in the denominator and m minus n of these by the first rule if you add these two together we have m in the numerator okay so given that we've uh, written it in that way we can then cancel this which matches with what's in the denominator and instead of that we put a one and in this case we have m minus n of these a's. All right, so that gives us this second rule. 
Okay, now this next one perhaps is a little more tricky. All right, so if we are now looking at this, there are m of these, and we say, well, we want to multiply this times itself n times. Okay, so copy paste times dot dot dot, and we're saying there are n of these things in brackets. Okay, now you count up how many have you got in total. Well, there's m there, there's m there, there's m there, but there are n of these things in brackets. So that has to be the product, m times n, a's that are all there multiplying together. Okay, so that's how we get that rule. Now, what about this other one? Okay, so if we have a times b, all to the power of m, well, there are a, sorry, there are m a's and m b's, and so we can express it in this way, a to the m times b to the m. Right, likewise, this rule here um, follows in the same way. Okay, next we have a very important rule, a to the power of zero is one. So this says we don't have any a's multiplying by them by itself. Okay, so the only thing that we have then is one times no a's, all right? So the best way to uh, think of that is just that's the number one. Okay, now a to the power of minus n is one divided by a to the power of n. And finally, a to the power of the fraction m over n is to be expressed as the nth root of a all to the power of m. Okay, so since this is a Mathematica uh, tutorial, let's do some calculations in Mathematica. All right, so consider, consider uh, three to the power of five. All right, shift enter, that's a number, two, four, three. All right, now let's look at multiplying that by 3 to the power of 8. Okay, now look at our rules. Which one of these rules would be useful? Well, the first one, right? Because we have the same base, 3. Uh, we have an exponent of 5 and an exponent of 8. And so we should be able to simply add together those exponents and see that that is 3 to the power of the sum which is 13. Okay, let's investigate by shift enter. All right, so we get this number. And now let's try it the other way, three to the power of five plus eight. Well, look at that, we get the same number. So no surprise there. Uh, this rule was just used. And of course, Mathematica knows those rules. Okay, now what if we look at writing the quotient? All right, so let's look at this right here. That's the quotient that I've just written. So this should be m minus n in the exponent. So I should change this to a minus, shift enter, and we have three to the power of minus three, which is one over 27. Okay, now these are numbers, so what about dealing with algebraic expressions. Well, that's, fi that's fine too. So if I change this to an x, shift enter, well, I get an algebraic expression, okay? x to the fifth over 6561. Let's do something more complicated. So let's come down here and have a look at this problem. Now look, you would want to do this by hand in, in order to make sure that you understand the way all of these rules work. All right, you look at this expression and you one by one apply these rules. All right, so let's go through these rules first before we do this in Mathematica. So here we have x squared times y to the minus three and that's all to the power of two. All right, now which rule says that I can um, put that two together with these other exponents? Well, it's this fourth rule right here. All right, we have two different bases. All right, so you might consider x squared is equal to a, 
and y to the minus 3 is equal to b, and then you can directly apply this fourth rule, right? Which would say that we represent that as a to the m, but in our case, a was equal to x squared. So this is x squared all to the power of 2, and then we can now use this third rule, okay? Which says that that is a to the power of the product. So x to the power of 2 times 2. Likewise, we have y to the power of minus 3 times 2. All right, so here is our numerator. Now, we assume that x and y uh, hold different quantities. So we cannot join those, as in they're possibly different bases. So we leave it that way. Okay, now we can simplify this in another step and say that this is x to the fourth, multiplying that out, and this is y to the minus sixth. All right, now what, what would we want to do next? We would want to use this rule right here that looks like the seventh rule that says one over a to the power of n is a to the power of minus n. So that's useful because then we can simply add the exponents, okay? So we bring this up and when we do that, we change the sign right here. You see that minus of minus two. Okay, likewise with the y to the power of 4, when we move it up and then we use the first rule that says we can add the exponents. Okay, simplifying that by adding those exponents, we have 4 minus minus 2 and that is 6, and minus 6 minus 4, that is minus 10, and so the result is x to the 6 times y to the minus 10, which you could also write as x to the 6th over y to the power of 10. Okay, now let's do this in Mathematica. Make that calculation. I'll scroll down here and I'll input. Uh, well, look, I could open up a palette and do this, but I find it easier to just enter it in this way. However, I need to be really careful about the brackets, okay? So I'm entering the square that we have in the numerator. And inside that bracket, I have x cubed. And then if I just press the space bar, that will give a multiplication, right? So that means times y to the power of minus three. Okay, and I should say that a lot of my students would get the brackets put in the, in the wrong place and get the wrong answer. So do be really careful about how you place your brackets. All right, and next in the denominator we have x to the power of minus two, and then we're multiplying that, so I put a space by y to the power of four. Okay, now I have a bracket around the whole denominator, right? That says, in fact, I want the whole thing to divide this numerator, and that's the way you wanna do it. If I left the bracket out, that might be misunderstood by Mathematica. Okay, now let's press Shift Enter and compare it with what we got on the PDF. Okay, so our answer is x to the power of 8 by y over y to the power of 10. Okay, let's compare, and that's exactly what we have right down here at the bottom. Alrighty, so that's just about all I have for you on powers. I hope you learned something and Check out some of my other basic videos if this is your thing. If it's not your thing, check out some of the more advanced things that I've done. Okay, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.